and we've got a special edition of The Current Tomorrow as part of our project shift on demographic change. We're still on election issues, and we're going to invoke, devote the entire program to the needs and concerns of older voters. With the largest bulge in our population in their 60s, politicians are seemingly taking note. All of them um, are believed to be courting the senior vote. Tomorrow morning, we're going to open up the phone lines and ask seniors, or almost seniors, across the country to call in and weigh in on what you'd like to hear from our politicians on that issue. To set the stage, we're joined by Moses Zneimer. He's a broadcast pioneer, best known as the creator of City TV and Much Music. He's also the founder and CEO of Zoomer Media Limited, a multimedia company that caters to Zoomers, those over 45 years of age. He is the president of CARP, a group that advocates on behalf of older Canadians. Moses Zneimer is in Toronto. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Anna Maria. How well do you think the politicians and their respective parties are doing when it comes to addressing the concerns of older Canadians in this election? Oh, oh my, I think they're doing very well indeed when you consider, especially that in previous elections they weren't focused on this question at all. Finally, it's on the agenda in this election, but it's not a one-shot wonder. No, and there are big issues huh? it, when it comes to pension, health care, um, even family care and how people can, um, and home care. Yes. But what's, what's at the root of all of that is what's happening in the realm of demographics. It's what's happening when, through the miracle of modern medicine and better nutrition and better education, uh, we're all living longer, um, well, most of us, and and mostly we're living better, uh, while at the same time we're having fewer and fewer kids. So when you do that, finally the balance in a society begins to shift. And that is such a profound change in human history that I think people are just beginning to chew on it. I'm wondering if you're feeling a little bit of I told you so, because you recognize this this demographic for its power and its size, really, um, before other people were talking about it. That's true, and thank you for noticing. Um, in my previous career, I recognized the strength of power because of the size of this generation we've come to call the boomers. This is the generation that was created when the soldiers came home from the Second World War. It, they came home and they grabbed their honeys and, and they punched out this enormous generation, which, when it was first discovered, was discovered to be young. So so all things became young, and so the culture mistook their power for the power of youth, when in fact it was their size. And so as I was providing youth media to that generation, I began to think early on what, what happens when we all get older every year. I remember having that thought blindingly um, the, the night that we put much music on the air. I, I was, I think, about 40 at the time, and I remember thinking, well, can you run a rock video service when you're 60? And while I was sure about myself, <laughs> I didn't know about anybody else, but I did have the thought that if we're such a potent socio-political force today because of our size, why won't we continue to be that as we add on the years. It's interesting the, the, the point you make, that the power of youth, that the power of the size of the group was mistaken as a power of youth. And, I, you know, it's worth just getting your perspective on this because um, the the quote-unquote older demographic, which can go from 60 to 100 or 105, um, it's, not, it's not a monolith and it, it doesn't have the same spending patterns, aging patterns, health patterns. It's a real mix, isn't it? Well, if you mean it cuts across social class, yes, and uh, and obviously there are examples of high vigor and there are examples of frailty. One of the things we try so hard to do in um, in in the Zoomer movement in general is to uh, try and combat the kind of ageism you get when aging is itself instinctively and immediately associated with a decline and with death. And, and we know it's not true for the bulk of the people we now call boomers or uh, the people who read Zoomer magazine or watch Zoomer television or listen to Zoomer radio. They're, they're full of vim vitality. 
they have the time, they have the freedom, and many of them have the means to uh, not only indulge themselves, but to try and give something back, as, as a lot of them do. So we're trying to reflect what you're saying, which is there are many images of aging, and our society had better get used to the thought that we're living into our 80s now. And uh, when age begins and what it signifies is in for a radical redefinition. You know, it's interesting. I was reading on um, your magazine's uh, web page that um, a survey it was done in the States, but the, there's um, there's a parallel to Canada that 70 percent of women are worried about having enough money uh, in their lifetime versus 57 percent of men. They, they, they basically worrying that they'll outlive their savings as they get older and retire. Yes. And, and, and the largest part of uh, the aged who live in poverty are, of course, single women. Yeah, that's the fact. And I'm I'm wondering, uh, in terms again, if we look at this election, do you do you see that being addressed? Do you see it even being discussed? I don't know if it's gotten to that level of depth. I think there's a, a broader kind of focus on uh, being tough about elder abuse, uh, the refinements, you know, beyond uh, pension plan reform or uh, allowances for caregivers and so on. Uh, that's what I mean by this conversation is just getting started. So what are the primary political concerns of the demographic you're immersed in in your work? It, it's, it's not surprising, and it depends on, uh, on the mood of the moment, but it is some variation of uh, health security and uh, financial security. And then once those two have been addressed, there's, uh, you know, a number of... Uh, number threes and number fours. Some of these conversations are fairly intimately linked. Promises have been so public and detailed enough that whoever wins this election uh, will actually come across with some of it, but uh, everybody should be on notice that uh, this is a a huge conversation and uh, is probably going to be the dominant conversation over the next generation. And and I I, I hasten to add that uh, from our point of view, this is good news. This is what human history has been striving for. Mm. You know, all that research, all those technology advances, uh, it's supposed to extend human life and human happiness. Uh, And and yet there's a lot of alarm, isn't there? There's a lot of worrying about... uh, the treasury being broken and and the streets being filled with this wave of frail, dying people. So um, we think it's great news. That's the amazing thing. Oh, and there's more good news. Uh, When you hit 85, your chances of hitting 100 are excellent, statistically excellent. And there's a bonus for the guys. Did you know that? No, keep going. Yeah, when you hit 100, the girls outnumber the boys 7 to (laughs) 1. Well... (laughs) So do you think this Zoomer identity is starting to take hold politically? Oh, clearly. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've, I've coined a decent slogan or two in my time, but I've never seen a word be as quickly absorbed into the language. I'm, uh, I'm chuffed. Well, and I guess our leaders are aging as well, so I don't suppose it's, it's a bad thing to be looking at that demographic either. Oh, well, Anna Maria, dare I ask, are you nervous about telling us how old you are? I'm 53. You see, you are a Zoomer. You're, you're smack in the demo. There you go. <laughs> I'm proud and proud. Of course. What are the alternatives well, if we, I don't get older? <laughs> we agree, but, you know, we're coming out of a culture that reversed the equation. It, it wasn't that long ago when people who achieved a certain age were deemed to have, you know, learned something, have some knowledge, have some wisdom to impart. And there weren't that many of them, so they were they were accorded a great deal of respect. And uh, and then ever since the end of the Second World War, things turned on its head, and and um, and ours, arguably yours and mine in a way, um, are the people who then said, "Don't trust anybody over 30, right? Um, and here we are. The, the leading edge of us is hitting 65. And you can see the the inevitable march of demography by the way in which this campaign has unfolded. 
Well, you've exposed my age conflict of interest there, Moses Neimer. Thank you for speaking with me. All right. I look forward to hearing this program. Bye-bye. Bye. Moses Snymer is the founder and CEO of Zoomer Media Limited and the president of CARP, a national advocacy group for older Canadians. That's it for The Current. I'm Anna Maria Tremonti. Thank you for listening.